Good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? Come on. Sun's out. Man, what a great day to just to get going and, and love on our families. Hey, Father's Day is today. This is what your dad really wants. Can I just tell you? He wants a nap. Leave that man alone. Leave that man alone. You let him go eat his beef jerky that he got at Highlands Church. You let him have those sunflower seeds that he got at Highlands Church. And you leave that man alone. Leave that man alone. Let, let him just have a good old nap. And then wake him up and wrestle with him. Wrestle with him. I, I'm a dad of two daughters. And, and I, I always like wrestling in the floor. And, and Sandra goes, don't be so rough. I say, you know what? You know what? Um, I, I pray that God gives you grandsons one day, Sandra, that just tears the house up. But in the meantime, I'm going to wrestle with my girls. I'm so thankful for, for all the great dads in the church, all the spiritual dads in our church. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing your life. Thank you for sharing your calendar and saying, you know what? I, I, uh, I've got kids, but also I've got spiritual kids that I've mentored and, and invested into and, and added value to. And, and I, I'm, I'm some of the greatest dads on the planet, listen to me, they're in this room and they're watching online right now. I mean that with all of my heart. And I'm honored to do life with you. I, I really am. Because of your generosity, I learned generosity from my mom and my dad. My dad was one of the most generous people that I know. Um, he, he, um, he taught me how to tithe. He taught me how to give offerings. My dad and my mom, they used to put little envelopes in my hand. Remember the envelopes, you know, back in the day? And they would put some, some coins because I could feel it. And then I'd put paper money. I'm like, oh, whole nother level as a kid. But you know what they did? They, they taught me to release it. They didn't teach me to keep it. And, um, and so my dad taught me generosity. And because of your generosity, moms and dads and, and students, by the way, we got students that tie. They have part-time jobs and they're hustling. I, I just, it, blesses, it just blesses my heart, the generosity, the spirit of generosity that's on our church. And because of your generosity, we're able to, here's, here's where some of it goes, but we do overseas missions, absolutely. The book of, we put the word of God in the hands of every child on the planet. That is our vision. Well, as we partner with One Hope, we do that in paper form, in movie form, and in digital form. At the pace that we're going at right now, it will be accomplished by 2030. It will be accomplished by 2030. It's amazing what God is doing. Uh, also, also, uh, we have uh, some of the, the, the tithes and offerings. They go stateside. Stateside means that we plant churches, that, that plant churches that give to missions. We plant life-giving churches. We believe that every community needs and deserves a life-giving church, a church that preaches the word of God and serves that community, adds value to that community. A part of your giving, hey, watch this, it stays in the backyard. It stays in this community. And we partner with organizations that, that help uh, be a blessing um, to our community. And then one, one area that I love our, our outreach is through the church. We don't give to a church, we give through the church. And one way we do that is through like VBS or Vital Bible Schools is what we're calling it this summer. And what we've done is we've, we've uh, carved out some Wednesday nights in June and in July. We come up here and we're gonna invest and disciple and build great families, everybody. And because of your generosity, we're able to do that with every age you know, from the littles all the way to the, to the, old, uh, the older folks uh, in, in, in families. I see some people going, yay, that's me. Older folks. Give it up for the older folks. And, um, and, 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 you know, the bounce houses that you see when the kids come up on Wednesday nights, guess what? We, you guys, we, we pay for that because we want those kids to know the best hour of my week, it happens in the house of God. It happens in the house of God. And there's nothing like bouncing with an ice cream sandwich. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, we're able to do that kind of stuff. We're able to have fun and enjoy each other, enjoy the Lord. And uh, maybe you're here tonight and you say, or this morning, and you're like, man, I, I want to I worship a little bit longer. Well, then come on back Wednesday night. Man, didn't the worship team do amazing today? Man, if you like that, man, I want you to come back Wednesday night where we get to linger a little bit and, uh, and, and worship God. I want to brag on a guy that helped me plant this church. He is a dad and a spiritual dad to me. It's my dad, Pop. Everybody knows Pop. Uh, but, but this is my, my dad. I hung out with him just for a little bit yesterday. Come on, put your hands together for Pop. Yes. 
the, we, uh, we, we, we hung out yesterday, solved all the world's problems. Had a great time, had a great time. Um, you know, I, I, I was very thankful to be with Pop yesterday I, um, because I, last summer, um, Pop had a stroke. And thank God he's recovering, in Jesus' name, right? And, but, but he had a stroke, and I thought, wow, never had a Father's Day without my dad. And um, it's been a long year, but you know what? I, I enjoyed spending some time with him yesterday. And as I was driving in this morning, I mean, I'm so grateful for my girls. I'm thankful for my awesome wife and my dad and, and my in-laws. I'm so thankful for granddaddy, my dad's, my, my, uh, Sandra's dad. We're, we live in the legacy that they built. But then I had this, this moment as I was driving to church this morning. Man, it's Father's Day. This is probably going to be the, the first Father's Day for some of you that dad's not here. And I, I want to pray for you today because he didn't do that bad of a job because you're here. Come on. He did something right because you are seeking the Lord. That you're leaning into the things of God. And he's invested in you. And, uh, you know, as dads, we don't always get it right. But you know what? Our heart is to serve our kids and serve our wife and serve the home and, and be a blessing to our friends. And so I want to do this. I want to pray before we jump into God's word today. I've got a, I've got a word. Is it a Father's Day message? Yeah, every Sunday is a Father's Day message. <laughs> but I've got a message for everybody. It's going to touch everybody today. But before we do that, we're going to pray and we're going to honor dads and, and honor our Heavenly Father who really, really does a good job of taking care of his kids. Amen? Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you that you model what love is. You, you've set the table before us that we can just come to the table and have not religion, but relationship. Thank you that you want to be with us. Thank you for that you provided a way to come home. And so today, I pray that we would open up our hearts and open up our minds to your word. And I pray that as we leave this place, that Jesus is the only name that we remember. He's the one that gets all the glory and all the, all the fame. But before we go and, and read your, the Bible, study your word, grow in our faith, I pray a special blessing on every dad in this place and joining us online. The world has beat us up. The world sometimes says you've done a poor job or you've done this or you've done that. God, I pray that they would be refreshed. Not condemned, but refreshed because they're with you, because they love their family. And Lord, I pray that you would drop a special word in the heart of every dad here. Give them the strength to go on and love and minister and serve and to hustle to show us what laying their life down for us looks like. Lord, we want to do that. We want to be servants first. Servant leaders is what we want. So bless them good, God. And <laughs> give them a good nap this afternoon. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. come on. Everybody said, one more time for the dads. All the dads. Let's put our hands together for the dads. Come on. Can we celebrate them? God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Well, what, this is what we do. We, we do a study of a Bible or a character in the Bible every summer. And, and we're doing this, this summer series. The first two weeks of this series, we, we taught you about um, what the Word of God does for us and, and, and how, how, what the morning hours look. Because we believe that what you do in the morning, it sets the pace and the trajectory of the rest of the day. Uh, Sandra did an amazing job last week, and as she shared uh, about what God's Word will do from the nine to five, your, your work life. Because I think that sometimes we as Christians, unfortunately, we frustrate the world by believing one thing, and then yet from nine to five, we project something else. And so God's Word keeps us on track so we can show that God loves people, that God's got a plan for people, and God is using us to be a blessing to others. And so today I want to do this. I want to start a Bible study, a short Bible, book of the Bible, start a Bible study in the Old Testament book uh, named after its character, and his name is Jonah. Everybody say Jonah. Jonah, that's right. When, when you study 
the Bible, any book of the Bible. This is, here, here's the big idea. You study for application. You study for application. How can I walk this out today, this afternoon, this week? We don't study just to get smarter. We study so we can live it out, right? And now the background of Jonah, Jonah is the Old Testament book. He's an Old Testament prophet, the prophet uh, to the king of of Israel, uh, King Jeroboam II. In the Bible, prophets hear from God and they proclaim what God has said. Now under the old covenant, God would speak through prophets, kings, and priests. Now, thank God we live under a new and better covenant that God can speak directly to every single one of us. Amen. Aren't we thankful for that? That God still uses prophets today, but I'm so grateful that God speaks through his word. He speaks by his spirit, that God is still speaking today. But back then, that God would speak to a prophet and he would proclaim to uh, what, what God is saying. Now, the events happened around 760 BC, about 250 years after King David. Now, the book was written actually at a later date, but we don't know exactly who that author is. If ever God painted a picture of human nature. It's in the book of of Jonah. It's our inclination to run from duty in favor of serving self. Let me say that again. It's just human nature. It's, it's, we are all bent, just born to the world, bent to go a little bit crazy. Come on, somebody. Right, And he did it through Jonah. God paints this this scripture uh, with the perfect portrait of, can we just say, a reluctant leader. So if you've ever had some hesitation about obeying God, well, you know what? You can identify with with Jonah's story. Let's start. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Are you ready to study your Bible? If you've got your Bibles, come on, wave your Bibles at me. Rave your phones at me. Come on, you ready to go? Jonah chapter 1. Here we go. Verse one, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai, okay? So, so all of a sudden, the Lord, he spoke to Jonah, and Jonah is, is, is the prophet to the nation of Israel, and he, he's got a dad, and his dad is Amittai. Now, now Jonah means, write this, write this down, Jonah means dove. That's what his name means, a dove. Now, birds have this ability to know when the storms are coming so they can, they can flee and get out of there um, and seek refuge before the, the storms arrive. Jonah, to, to some, he's been called the, the reluctant prophet or the runaway prophet uh, because he's, he's flighty, okay? Watch this. Now, Jonah means dove, but his daddy's name means, watch this, truth. Okay, so Sana, we got Sana. Jonah is, he's, he's a dove. He's the, the son of a guy named Truth. And so he is flighty. He's the one that's supposed to be carrying on or carrying the truth of God, but he gets a little scared. Okay, so let's we'll keep reading. But we're not going to get down on Jonah because um, the truth is a lot of that goes on in all of us. Verse four, uh, uh, John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus said this, look guys, I'm going to ask the father and and he's going to give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And he is the spirit of truth. He's talking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will live with you and he will be in you. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of what? The spirit of truth will be with you and he will be where? In you. Now look, we our dad's name might not mean truth, but we've got the spirit of truth on the inside of us, right? All right, but here's the problem. We know that we are the carrier of truth, and yet we still fly away sometimes. Are you guys seeing the parallels with this? Little teach you today, but we're gonna have a good time. All right. Let's keep reading. Jonah chapter one, verse two. Go to the great city. This is what the word says to the Lord says to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh, northeast. And preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish, since southwest, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. But so he paid the fare and he went down into it to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you can run from what God told you, but you cannot run from God. And when you try to run from God, guess what? There'll always be a group of people going the wrong way. 
<laughs> Maybe you are that group of people. <laughs> I know I was at times. It's, it's, it's funny, it, when you have clarity about I know what to do or I believe I know what to do it, it, and God's leading you, there's always a group of knuckleheads going in the opposite direction. Nineveh was the capital of, of Assyria in biblical times. Today, that would be like a, a northern Iraq. And Jonah was a prophet to the nation of Israel. Assyria, oh, this is funny, was the greatest enemy of, of Israel. Israel uh, Assyria is, was known as a, a violent culture. They would torture the people that they came against. Matter of fact, they would... They would um, uh, they would murder them and then place them so when, around the city. So when people came through the city, they would see that, okay, the Assyrians have, have been here. So check this out. So God is saying, okay, you're a prophet to Israel. I need you to go to your greatest enemy and, and tell them to turn or burn. So isn't it funny, like, well, I just know no, uh, Jonah, he's the one that runs from God. You would do the same thing too, right? So we're not going to get down on that because we won't even invite our coworker to church. You're a Jonah, right? So we learned in week one of the series, to, when we read our Bible, we talked about this in, in Wednesday, this past Wednesday, that God will put... Um, Easter eggs, like Stan Lee, any Marvel fans, or like Hidden Mickey, any, any Disney Park fans. There's, there's Jesus, little snapshots of Jesus are throughout the Old Testament. And you can see a type and shadow. Oh my goodness, this is the, the, uh, 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 a hidden Mickey all throughout the scriptures. Here's an example of that. Jonah is called by God to go serve his enemies. Do we know anyone else that has asked us to pray for our enemies? Yes, it's Jesus. And I can teach you more about how to read the Bible like that through the lens of grace if you come back this, this Wednesday, all right? So I want you guys to join me. Back to our story. Jonah chapter one, verse four. Then the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. So God says, I want you to go to Nineveh. He goes, no, I'm going the southwest. I'm not going northeast. I'm going the opposite direction. And God tells Jonah, go. And Jonah tells God, no. Here's a great equation. I want to share it with you. I've shared it with you a couple years ago. God's go plus your no equals a, oh, no. <laughs> Have y'all ever experienced that? God's got, you got to do this. This is the direction I have for your life. I'm going to do the opposite of that. And all of a sudden you go, what have I done? All right. Disobedience is costly. Disobedience is expensive. It cost him. It cost him his peace. It cost him his progress. And watch this. It always costs you and costs me. You know, I was thinking of, I have a brother, my brother and I have a younger brother. Uh, we grew up and we were all boy. I mean, we were mischievous. We did some crazy stuff. But I, it's, I, I, the, the fruit did not fall from the tree. And so I'm, I'm not going to tell stories on myself. Since it's Father's Day, I'm going to tell stories on my daddy. <laughs> my dad tells stories sometimes and I'm like, there's no way that that's true. And my mom goes, that's absolutely true. So when my, when my dad was in middle school, around, around that age that he, he was, they lived in the country. It doesn't seem like all the parents and their parents, everyone lived in the country back then. Like no one was from Manhattan, you know what I'm saying? And so my dad was, was, had a neighbor and his neighbor had a mule. And so he and his buddy would always ride that mule. Some people are laughing because you've heard this story. They would ride, they sneak over, across, across the fence and they would ride their neighbor's mule. And the neighbors told him, get, don't ride my mule. Get off my mule. Don't be riding my mule. Well, my dad and his, his little buddy, they got mad at that neighbor. And so they painted that mule with stripes so it looks like a zebra. <laughs> True story. I said, Pop, you did not. He goes, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I said, what, what did you do? He said, well, my, you know, grand, my, my granddaddy goes, yeah, my dad made me, he made me go over there and clean that mule. He said, and son, that, that was before latex paint. I said, you, 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 how did you do that? He said, I don't know, but that mule wasn't happy. <laughs> Disobedience is expensive. It's costly. 
And this is what I know. Sin will always take you further than you wanted to go and keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And it'll cost you more than you're willing to pay. (laughs) Jonah is headed to Tarshish, which is on the coast of Spain. and, And God says, I want you to go northeast. And he's headed southwest. And I, I want to encourage you with this. If this is for somebody. If, if some of you would just spend the amount of energy that you have in running from God and start running to God and obey, you'll, fig- you'll figure out really fast, it's a lot easier. Like you are spending way, so, way too much energy running from God. I mean, I, you see people. I mean, you, it's calculated. It's, you're, you're spending way, way too much time. And think about it. Obeying God would have cost him 550 miles. Disobeying God cost Jonah 2,500 miles. Let me say that again. If some of you would just put that energy into obeying God, it would actually be more profitable and, and, and less painful. And you would have less stress on your life. Can I get an Amen. Right? Today, I am not saying, and this is what I want you to make sure you know, I am not saying that your problems and your storms that you may be facing in life are are straight up because of your disobedience. I am not saying that. Matter of fact, that's not even biblical. Sometimes, you know, you just woke up and you just, there was a storm waiting on you. Come on, right? That's just the way it is. It rains on the just and the unjust. But I am saying, and I am suggesting that some of your problems are because of disobedience. I can say it with a smile on my face. You won't get mad at me, (laughs) right? Here's the takeaway for this week. Some of us have practiced selective hearing when it comes to God's commands. (laughs) And we disobey God or, or watch this, or we wait about doing the last thing that God told us to do. I want a word. I want a word. Why would God give you a word? You haven't obeyed the last word. <laughs> I want a new word. Why? He's not, you haven't obeyed the old word. <laughs> He's not, it's, no, it's not, it's not his turn to, get, to move. It's your turn to obey. And so you've been waiting and waiting, but watch this. Delayed obedience is disobedience. We would say it like this for our girls. I, when they were little, I'd say, hey, how do we obey? And if, if you've been around here any length of time, you know, you can probably say this with me. We, we obey right away, all the way, and in a cheerful way. Come on, that's, a good, that's good for parents right there, right? Does it always work? Nope. It does not always work, right? And guess what? It doesn't always work with God's kids either. How do we obey? Right away. You've been waiting on God. God's waiting on you. You know, all the way. Well, I kind of obey God. Well, kind of. It's like being kind of pregnant. You ain't obeying God. (laughs) You know, and in a cheerful way. Well, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do it. Anybody got teenagers? Take the trash out. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I love the obedience. I hate the attitude. Guess what? Do over. Some of you are in a do over because you did the right thing with a wrong heart. <laughs> okay, let's pray for the fathers right now. We're doing it. Hey, I, 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 uh, help me, Jesus. Selective hearing when it comes to the, to, the, to the things of God. So I have some extended family members. They got... Um, they got hearing aids. You know, they, they found out that they're years working in the factory and, and there's just a lot of, you know, that, so they're hearing aids. And, and what's funny is, is they were, they were um, their spouse, I'm trying to be super vague. Their spouse was, was yelling, hey, do this and do that. And I was with him and I said, so-and-so. I said, I think they're talking to you. He goes, what? I'm like, how did you hear me and you didn't hear that? He looked over at me, he went, And the, and the spouse said, oh, he just can't hear me. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, hey, everybody, look at me. You ain't fooling God. You're not fooling God. 
selective here is called, it's a sweeter way of saying, I'm disobeying, isn't it cute? (laughs) So what do we need to do to recover from disobedience? All right, well, I'm gonna help you today. Number one, write it down. Take responsibility for your bad choice. Just take responsibility for our bad choice. We live in a day and age where people are so quick to point fingers at others for the choices that they themselves make. All right, I I, I love what Jonah chapter one, verse 12 says. He says, listen, there's this big storm that came and his obedience started to cost the lives of those around him. And and he says, look, 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 this is what I know. Hey, listen, I I belong to God and, and I'm running from God. And they're like, are you kidding me? Like you, you, he goes, look, 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 pick me up and throw me into the sea. Okay. It, it, it will become calm because I, it's, it's on me. I know that it is my fault. i tell you what, that's the smartest thing I've read in a long time. You know what? I know this is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. The whole reason this mess is happening to you guys is because I'm running away from God. Newsflash. For some of you, you are the square root of the problems of of all your circumstances right now. It's it's you. You, The square root of your problems is you. Uh, The square root of my my problems, they're they're me. No, pastor, I don't receive that. It's the devil. No, it's you. It's it's, it's the the, the devil. The devil's trying to hinder my finances. No, (laughs) no, you live it above your means. That's good preaching. I don't have Sandra. Help somebody help me. <laughs> she's, she's traveling today, right? right? It's, you know, you, 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 bought, you use your tithe to buy a new toy and you don't live in our open heaven because the Bible says that, that when we tithe, we live on the windows of heaven are open upon us and he's pouring out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. I want a word. There's the word. It's the devil. No. The, de- the devil's trying to attack my health. No. I mean, yes, he, he's, he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy. But no, you eat fast food every day. You drink Coke every day. Okay? It's the sickness devil. No, it's McDonald's. <laughs> you know? The, de- the devil's causing my kids to act crazy. No, they're acting up because they want some attention. And and you don't understand is kids spell love, T-I-M-E. I'm helping you today. (laughs) Here's a powerful verse about us owning up to our own choices. I love this. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13. A man who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, watch this, he gets another chance. Anybody wants another chance? I do. I do. He gets another chance. Thank God we serve a God of a second chance. Write this statement down. The first step at receiving a second chance is always a repentant heart. That's where it starts. Hey, God, I confess it. I own it. I'm sorry. I want, I want a second chance. And the first step toward that is going Lord, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. And, and, and watch this. And my decision to run the opposite way is now affecting people around me. So I'm going to start there. Jonah was picked up and thrown overboard, but God knew that Jonah would make the decision and owe up to his sin. And watch this. He had a great fish waiting on him, not to hurt him, but to preserve him. You th- some of you in this room, and some of you are joining us online, you think that God wakes up every day waiting to get back at you. He's actually waiting to rescue you. And we talked about this Wednesday night. I want to encourage you to come this Wednesday. When you start reading your Bible through the lens of grace, you'll see that God continues to try to help and help and rescue and love and forgive and restore and redeem He sent a great fish, not a great white. There's a shark waiting. No, no. He sent a rescue plan. And there's always consequences to our sin, but there's always a way back to God's will. (laughs) The story of Jonah 
It's a story of a loving God that is pursuing his son because he loves people that are far from him. Do you know that the people of of Nineveh, God loves them. He just had a son rebelling. He's like, I need you to get right. I need you to repent. Why? Because I want to redeem a nation. I want to redeem a... God doesn't want you to repent so you'll feel bad. He wants you, he, he convicts you so you can repent, so you can be a blessing. <laughs> That's it. Our running from God, I th- I'm so thankful for this. It does not cancel the calling of God on our life. All right, so number one, number one is, is what are we gonna do? We're gonna take responsibility and own our, our last bad decision. And then number two, write it down, <gasps> obey God and take steps. And I wrote that, I, I wrote that statement, obey God, and take steps because you can obey God in your heart. God, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing you. I'm, I'm going after you. But see, steps, obedience can only be expressed through action steps. I, I can tell my wife I love her every day, but I, ultimately, I need to grab the vacuum cleaner. Come on, ladies, where you at? Ultimately, I, I got to start proving my commitment. All right, well, pastor, that's number two. What's number three? There is no number three. Obey God, take steps. Jonah chapter one, verse 17. We're gonna wrap it up today with this. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Does that sound familiar? Three days and three nights? Who is that? Ah. See, everything points back to Come on, the Old Testament, the New Testament, everything points back to Jesus. Jesus, what am I saying today? Your breakthrough is swimming towards you. If you would just say, that's on me. I repent, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. Today I obey and today I prove it by taking a step. Let's all stand to our feet. Hope you got something out of today's message going to unpack this in a more deep teaching this Wednesday. And I would love for you to come on back and be a part of that. Before we leave, I want to pray for you right now. God's got something special that he wants to do in your heart before, before we leave. Let's all have every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, ah, so good to know that Old and New Testament is a picture of a loving God that's pursuing a sinful mankind. We're broken, we're messed up, we, we, we're twisted. We are bent toward selfishness. We're bent toward fear. But because of your loving kindness toward us, you throw out the net, you give us another chance. So Father, right now, right now, we say, I'm sorry, I repent, we repent. Go ahead and own it, just tell the Lord, right where you're at, just in your heart, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back to do that thing, that, that step of obedience. Maybe that obedient step is making that phone call and apologizing. Maybe that obedient step is, is uh, a text away, a, a, a conversation away. Maybe that obedient step is, is doing the principles of God, some biblical practices that you know, yeah, I've been, I've been skating on that. I've been passing on that today. I need to get back to that. Lord, thank you. The moment that he repented, you deployed. You sent the answer. So right now, as we repent and confess our sin, just in our heart between me and you, us and you, Lord, the answer is being released. The prayer that we've been praying, the breakthrough that we've been standing for, it's on the way because of your loving kindness. Thank you, God. Still in the attitude of prayer. If you're here today and you say, Man, I, I, uh, I've never read the Bible uh, through the lens of grace. I, I thought that God was mad at me. I, I just thought he was waiting for me to mess up again. No, no, God loves you. He's pursuing you and, and he's doing that again today. And, and you knew that when you came on the campus or you walked through the door. It's almost like there's this homing beacon. Like, man, I, I feel like drawn. I feel drawn. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit. He's saying, come home. Come on back. I wanna know you. I wanna have a relationship with you. And today, 
that can happen. You may not know how to do that. So I'm going to say a prayer for you. And if you be so bold and say, how could you please, please count me in on that prayer? I want to know God. I want a real relationship with the Heavenly Father this Father's Day. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Today I'm coming home. Or maybe, maybe you made that decision a while back, but today you, you find yourself far from God. But today you also find yourself saying, I'm sorry. God, forgive me. I'm coming home. You would like to rededicate your life to Christ. You want to come home, start that relationship again anew. Either of those invitations, if either or one of those, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you before we leave. On the count of three, this is what I want you to do. This, if, this is pretty bold. Just slip your hand up and slip it right back down. That's just you saying, Pastor, can you count me in on that? I mean business with God. Today, I want to start my relationship with the Lord. Or today, I want to recommit my life to Jesus Christ. And I mean that. I'm not going to have you come up forward. You can make this decision right there in your chair or right wherever you're joining us online. On the count of three, are you ready? Come on. What a great Father's Day. One, two, three. And slip your hand up right now. God bless you. This is awesome. This is great. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to pray for you. And I'd love for you to do this. Let, I want everyone to pray together. Just repeat after me. Let your heart agree with it and speak this out of your mouth. Just saying, you know what? This Today is my day. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. I believe that he is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for living life my way. But today I'm living life your way. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. So save me now. I surrender my life to you. Make me brand new. Fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you. You saw hands that went up. Lord, I pray a special blessing for all the families and everyone under the sound of my voice. Just being in your presence was so good today, God. We leave here encouraged. We leave here built up knowing that you are the God of the second chance. Come on, church. He is the God of the second chance. And for that, we are grateful. For that, we are so glad. I pray a blessing over your people before we leave like we do every week. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and lift up his countenance upon your life. And may God give you his peace. If y'all receive that blessing, come on, put your hands together and let's thank God for what he's done. Amen. Pastor Coop.